Thank you, thank you Anna. So, much. so thank us. I'll begin by thanking the organizers for inviting me. It's a great pleasure. Can you hear me well? Yes, great. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. It's, I think, the first time, second time I, I, I give a plenary in, at uh, IC Prem. The last one was, we're trying to, to see if we could remember what year. I think it was 12 years ago or something like that in Madeira. The, the very different topic then. So I'll be talking about causal discovery and uh, this and, and causality in general. Uh, I don't know, I will assume that uh, most of you don't know much about causality, so I'll, I'll take it slowly and we'll talk a, a lot about the foundational aspects. And then in the end I'll speed up a little bit and I'll talk about some recent advances. I, I removed the recent advances from the title uh, because I think the slide looks nicer like this. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit about recent advances at, at the end, but it won't be a very uh, top uh, talk, m very much focused on recent advances. So why, why talk about causality? So humans are extremely worried about causation and causality. All human thinkers, um, all relevant human thinkers since uh, Aristotle is uh, up to today are thinking about cause and effect. So for example, Baruch Spinoza in the, in the in 17th century wrote something like, nothing exists in which it cannot be asked what is the cause, why it exists. Every time you use the word cause, why, because, all of those words, you're talking about causation. And Leibniz has these famous uh, sufficient, uh, the, the principle of sufficient reasons, where he said that uh, we can find no true or existent fact, no true assertion without there being a sufficient reason, and reason is synonymous to cause why it is thus. So people worry a lot about causation, and humans are essentially, are very much machines to learn about cause-effect relationships in the world. Babies, when they're with small babies, interact with the world frantically, essentially, to try to understand what happens when you do this, when you do that. Um, so let me begin with a very uh, well-known example. Maybe I, I'm, who's seen this plot before? So this is a plot that relates uh, chocolate consumption in kilograms per year per, per capita on the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, you have number of Nobel laureates per 10 million population. So there's obviously very strong correlation between the two. They're highly correlated. Switzerland is way up there. Of course, we eat a lot of chocolate in Switzerland, and they have a very large number of Nobel Prizes per population. So we have Portugal down here with our, exactly, we are 10 million, and we had two Nobel Prizes. Same level as Spain that has, I think, five Nobel Prizes and around five times our population. And there's a clear correlation. Of course, no one, no sane people would believe that it's because you eat a lot of chocolate that scientists do good science. Of course, you all know this. Another nice example which I like to, to mention is this, uh, this paper published in this journal called Teaching Statistics. Of course, it's a, it's a, it's a tongue-in-cheek 